say the best till last. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me take you back to 2001, the year that Tony Blair won a second term, David Beckham scored that goal to send England to the World Cup, the first Harry Potter film was opened, and on a dark note, a terrorist flew planes into the World Trade Center. And 2001 was also the year that I joined Kundal Manor Nursery, where apparently I didn't cry when I was left, but had a huge paddy when my mum came to collect me. <laughs> my Kundal career had begun. Over the last 14 years, I have been witness to many changes. Heads have come and gone some quicker than others. <laughs> <laughs> the school has uh, grown massively. There has been the creation of upper school, which without I wouldn't be standing here. But despite all this, some constants do remain. Don't they, Mr. Vale? <laughs> the opportunities Kundal has given me have been numerous and amazing. I have ridden a camel through the Sahara Desert, which wasn't the most comfortable experience. I've had centre four tickets at Wimbledon, thanks to Mary Rose. I've eaten L'Escargot in France, and I've learned to ski and sail. Although the majority of my experiences have been fantastic, we did also have the wilderness trip. Two nights on a windswept, rain-soaked mountain, with no tent, thanks to Charlie Wilde. <laughs> who left the tent poles at the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> not, not really my idea of fun. Tom Dale was heard to say, seriously, what is the point of this? <laughs> well, well, apparently it's character building and we've got two more weeks of it when we canoe the Canadian wilderness this summer. Seriously. Two weeks, in Barbados, two weeks in Barbados would have been nice. I think our characters are definitely built. Although I will never forget these experiences when I look back at my time at Kundal, it's the people that make this place memorable. Firstly, my mates, this year's Thornton. We are an exceptionally talented year. <laughs> We are extremely good looking. <laughs> we are blessed with outstanding brains. Our sporting prowess is legendary. <laughs> we actually drew two football matches this year. <laughs> we are also a very international year. We have a South African in Grace and Maguire, a future South African rugby legend. You can pay me later. Tom Dale has given our year a bit of New Zealand culture with his love of sheep. <laughs> Anthony Huntinger brings, brings a bit of French flair to the year. Our year also has two Chinese students with Tim and Gabriella. Gabriella gave me some Chinese advice for public speaking. She told me to imagine that everyone in the audience were cabbages. So basically, you guys are just a sea of green. We also have some Irish and German with Ross and Shannon. And of course, there is a good amount of British stock. Next, the teachers. I probably should give them a mention. No, really, I would like to say thank you to you all for putting up with me all these years. But I will give a special thanks to my GCSE teachers. So firstly, Mrs. Hall, our head of upper school, who holds everything together brilliantly. Madame Hunzinger, I would have liked to have given this thank you in French like Will Shaw did last year, but you know how long it took me to pass my French oral, so I'll just stay safe and say merci madame. <laughs> Mr Lyley, our famous rugby player, who is also famous for putting team sheets up nice and early and his meticulous lesson planning. But my GCSE PE lessons have been the highlight of my week, so thank you. Mrs. Jackson, our new English teacher, have you noticed how many literary techniques I've managed to fit into this speech? <laughs> Miss Stoven, I hope you're looking forward to Canada. Your amazing knowledge of geography should help us navigate the wilderness. Mrs. Wilde and Mr. Kirby, my science teachers, 
I can only apologise. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Sample. Finally, Mr. Sample. <laughs> we have known each other a long time. You taught me football when I was five. You've taught me history for hours <laughs> and hours and hours. You made me cricket captain of the under-13s. I will never forget being sent out to bat by you with the chilling words, Flash, do not get out. <laughs> I really think Alistair Cook wouldn't throw away his wicket so easily if you were coach of the England cricket team. But what a lot of you may not know is that Mr Sample regularly gives inspirational assemblies. <laughs> Uh, one really sticks in my mind about setting and achieving goals. Mr. Sample explained to the whole school that he had set himself a goal. Do you remember, sir? It was to um, run a marathon before you were 40? <laughs> Um, so obviously, we really want you to achieve this goal. So we have all clubbed together. Ben, have you got the gift? time, I think three hours is achievable for you. <laughs> I can't leave the stage without saying a huge thank you to, to my mum for always being there for me. So that's the end of my speech and my condo career. If I survive the Canadian wilderness with this lot, I'm heading to Bootham with Charlie and a few of the girls. <laughs> But I will really miss you all. Thank you. <laughs>